Hey guys, it's Chippy. I'm just going to do an SSD upgrade on the Toshiba Z830 here. So uh, I'm going to run you through uh, the process in, in an article, and this is the video to accompany it. Uh, basically, we've got the Toshiba Z830. But first things we need to do is to, to create a system image, create a uh, recovery media. And I'm doing that by using Backup and Restore in Windows 7. You can see that here. Just uh, hit the Start menu, type Backup, and you'll find this uh, window. And then you need to create a system image. Um, now what I've done here is I've added a, an external USB drive here. It's only 80 gigs. I've only got about 60 gigs worth of uh, used space on this this uh, this laptop anyway. And I'm, then I'm creating the, the system image. It's basically a copy of the disk uh, that will go onto the hard drive. After that we'll create a system repair disk. And we'll do that onto an external DVD uh, CD writer. Uh, it only only needs a CD. I mean, you can do it on DVD if you want, uh, but it only needs a CD there, and that will create the restore. Sorry, the boot disk that allows you to then restore from the image that's on the USB drive. So once we've done this, we're going to turn this baby upside down, pull the old SSD out, put a new one in. Uh, from my digital SSD, we've got a 256 gig drive that we want to upgrade to, and uh, and then we'll take it from there. So after creating the image, you'll need to create a system repair disk. Uh, if you've got your USB hard drive attached, it should detect that. And you should be able to select the uh, drive and then just hit create disk to create the system recovery disk. And once all that's finished, all you need to do then is to shut down the uh, laptop, remove all the power, remove all the accessories flip it over and let's have a look to see how we actually change the SSD on the Toshiba Z830. So this is the bit that potentially uh, invalidates the warranty on your laptop so be aware that uh, when you do this you are unlikely to have any warranty or guarantee on the device. So what we'll do on the Z830 is we'll just go around the device and uh, just take the screws out and then we can flip the back off fairly easily. So we've got 11 small screws and two large screws which were a cross head but that's not it. There's one more in the middle here which is actually a, whoops, just take that uh, plastic cap off. One more which is actually a Torx screw. So it's not a cross head, you'll need a Torx uh, driver just to pull that out. But once you've done that, the whole thing lifts off really, really easily and just off this side, pull it across and you're in. And there is your MSATA SSD that we're going to be swapping out. So it's crosshead screws again. Uh, in theory you should be earthing yourself with an anti-static strip. Um, I'm not doing that, but you should. Two screws, pop that out, and there's the Toshiba SSD, the 128 gig uh, Toshiba SSD that's in the original Z830. So, let's pull out the uh, My Digital SSD Bulletproof. We can use the same screws, pop that in, and we are away. So, you've uh, added the new SSD, pop the uh, lid back on from the right hand side. You need to just go over the audio ports, push down from there, and then you can screw the back in. I wouldn't screw everything in to start with, just screw one or two things in and we can boot up, check the SSDs accepted. So let's just boot that up and see if the SSD has been accepted. Just going to press the power button and hit uh, F2, should go in there and if we go into, well it's showing the SATA SSD here as the HS, HS, sorry, the HDD1, no details on the actual drive there. If I go to the change of the boot order, order, you see the SSD has been accepted there. So I've reattached the optical disk drive and reattached the external hard drive to the USB ports. Let's boot up. Go to F12 just to make sure it boots into the uh, CD-ROM. And we want to go to optical disk drive and we'll boot from that.
So we're just coming into the recovery program, having booted from the recovery CD. As you can see, the mouse is recognized here. And uh, there'll be a number of options that come up. So we need to go to System Recovery Options. Next, select the default keyboard. And then Restore Your Computer Using a System Image is the default setting. Hit Next. It's scanning for a system image and it's found an image uh, on the C drive which is actually the external hard drive connected to the laptop so all we need to do now is hit the next button and then we've got uh, options here just take the uh, the default which will mean uh, the SS uh, MSATA will be formatted and um, hit next button and all disks will be restored, of course. Let's see what happens. Now this takes a little while. It uh, should be fairly fast, actually. Certainly faster than restoring to the uh, the saving to the hard, hard drive, but it's going to be a good 10, 20 minutes, I think. So let's uh, turn this off, and I'll come back to you when it's done. So we're just about ready with the restore. It's through the final uh, partition now, which I believe is the... A restore partition. It's asking me for a restart, so let's go for that. And let's see what happens. What should happen now? It should boot off the SSD, not off the uh, optical disk drive, and we should have exactly the same image as when we started on the old CD. Let's see what happens. So it's not booting from the optical disk drive. There we go, it's booting from the brand new SSD. Quick check on that. Let's see what uh, capacity we've got. And we're definitely into my previous build. Let's go to computer. And we have um, two partitions on this. Uh, it's asking me to uh, restart again. But I have definitely got um, 50, 70. I'm not seeing all the partitions there at the moment. So what's happened is it's restored the original partitions. And I'm going to have to um, probably repartition it to get the full effect. But let's, let's, um, let's see what partitions are actually free on the disk. So I'm going to go to, uh, you go to computer, manage, and then you go to disk management, and we should see that there's a partition unused on the new disk. And there it is, 129 gig unused. Let's just create a new partition there, and mount it as F drive. Once that's formatted, and that should be a fairly quick format, there we go. Wait for it, wait for it. F drive with 119 gigs free. So we are down now here with the um, full 256 gigs available. And it's uh, now up to you whether you repartition, move stuff around, or leave it as it is. So let's go and do some tests now, see what the boot speeds are like, see what the crystal disk marks res uh, results are like. So the first test being done right now. And there's the first uh, read speed, 254, 247, 254. Let's see what the write speeds are like. We're expecting over 80. 217, so that's great. The original disk drive was around 60 to 80 megabytes a second uh, write speed. And so we'll run through the rest of these results now, and uh, and then we'll I'll bring up the the results from the original test we did. So there are the final results then from the uh, my digital SSD bulletproof three. And let's bring up the test results I did on day one of getting this uh, Toshiba. So this is the original Toshiba SSD. So. If you look at the read speed, the sequential highest read speed, 193 to 254, slight increase there, which is really nice. But here we get to the really important figures here, the write speed, the sequential write speed has increased from 45 
to over 4x, 217 megabytes a second. Looking at the 512K block size, it's increased about 6x, and these are really, really important figures here. Uh, looking at the 4K write speeds, uh, we've increased uh, the read speed from, well, that's a uh, 2x improvement there, and something like a 50% improvement there. So that's really important. 32 is a fantastic 4K uh, write speed. And then the uh, QD32 results, this one, now I have to actually have a look at why that is so so much more. That's that's 10x. I don't understand why that's 10x more. In fact, I have to actually look into what QD32 means in detail. But that's improved as well. But these three here, the 25, 32, and 45 have been improved to 217, 201, and 32. That is a huge, huge improvement. Now let's test uh, boot speed. Okay, we're going to give this uh, boot speed test now. And here we go. One go. Right, remember this is um, a mature system, so it's not a vanilla Windows 7 build. Um, we tested the original SSD at um, 17 seconds boot. So that was 15 seconds to the uh, to the sounds, to the Windows welcome sound. And uh, so a couple of seconds maybe improvement there. Not massive, the original SSD had quite a good read speed anyway. It was actually the write speed of the uh, original SSD that wasn't that good. So we weren't really expecting a huge improvement, but 15 seconds is still pretty damn impressive. So that's it then. That is, uh, that is an upgrade of the original 1 to 8 gig Toshiba SSD in the Toshiba ZA30 to the My Digital SSD Bulletproof 3 SATA 3 SSD with 256 uh, gigs of uh, storage. It's a well, well worthwhile upgrade if you can afford it. It's not the cheapest uh, of upgrades, uh, but those read and write speeds have improved so much. I'm sure we're going to see those in in real life. Check the see see the effects in real life. Check the article out. Uh, which relates to this uh, video. It's on ultrabooknews.com. Probably under slash tag slash SSD you'll find it. Um, or search for uh, my digital SSD on the site and uh, and you'll see it there. On that article I'll, uh, I'll show the test results and give you some um, real world uh, feedback on, on how it uh, affects uh, daily use of the device. Thanks for watching. It's ultrabooknews.com. And uh, that has been the SSD upgrade from my digital SSD. Thanks to my digital SSD for sending the SSD over.